Hello everybody and welcome to number 27 and this is a very very special video because it's the first time that I am filming from the USA, from Oklahoma to be precise. I'm here on an incredible adventure looking for my next car, the one to replace the Influenza. And I am here with two great friends who are going to be helping me out and that is Dr Chuck and Pilot Mike. Chuck is a retired neurosurgeon and Mike is a pilot. So I am indeed in esteemed company. With Mike's help, I have found a project car which sounds perfect for me. There is a sad story surrounding the car, but let's go and have a look at it. I'll tell you more about the circumstances under which it's being sold, and we'll check it out and see if it's gonna become my next project car. A short while later, and we're pulling up to a house in Edmond, just outside Oklahoma City. And immediately you can tell that this place used to belong to someone who had a real passion for cars, because the land is literally littered with workshops. The one we're pulling up to now with the red roof is the one that we're interested in. You can't imagine just how excited I was at this stage. I was just about to see my potential new project car. So I think most of you by now had worked out that it is a Pantera. But let me tell you a little bit more about this particular car. Now this car belonged to a chap called Jim, a real character, very well known in the Pantera club in the US. He has restored several of these. Unfortunately, he didn't get a chance to finish this one and he passed away some time ago. Jim has already done the lion's share of the work on this car. We'll take a look at it in more detail, but essentially all the big stuff has been done. So the body has been restored, it's been repainted, the engine has been rebuilt, although we don't know to what spec. The suspension, as you can see, is all new. You know, it's a very, very good basis. There is still quite a lot of work to do, but that'll be brilliant for what I'm planning anyhow. So let's take a closer look and see what we have. Chuck kindly sent me some information previously already, some pictures, so we have a, a, a sort of a vague idea of what we're looking at, but we need to sort of ascertain that and just make sure that I'm happy to go ahead with it. So let's take a closer look. As I mentioned, the bodywork has largely been done, so there's no rust. And Chuck, you had a good look at it, didn't you? There's definitely right. no rust, nothing there. We'll take a closer look again. Obviously, it's nice, new, shiny paintwork. One of the things I have noticed is there are some strange marks. Uh, I don't know if you can see them on the camera. I'll get them maybe with the other camera and overlay them. But there are some strange marks on the wheel arches. But apart from that, it is nice. And most of the work really needed on the body has been done. As you can see, uh, the interior definitely still needs some work. Now, I believe that electrically, this has had several upgrades. And you can see because there is a fuse box there which is upgraded. We don't know exactly what's going on there. Obviously, it looks a little bit dirty, but on the whole, pretty good condition. The roof liner will need to be done. And there's lots of other bits and bobs to do. But the interior is probably the least finished area of the car, I would say. Although perhaps I spoke too soon because the engine bay reveals a distinct lack of engine and gearbox. But all the suspension has been completely redone. It's brand new. Uh, so along with the general condition of the chassis, I think this is a car which is an, really a fantastic project for me. Something else which is really good about this car is that being a 74, it would have had the later sort of bigger bumpers, the big nose cone and so on. Uh, I do prefer the later, the, the earlier, sorry, thin sort of chromed editions, and this has already been converted to that. So that is, again, a major plus. So we have here the engine, which Jim has definitely rebuilt, but we don't know the exact specs of what we have. Obviously it has Edelbrock heads, aluminium heads, um, but we don't really know the spec of the cam. But judging 
by Jim's sort of reputation and so on, I think you guys said that it's quite likely that it's just a sort of a hottish street motor, but quite drivable and so on, right? Right. Jim was Jim was never after trying to bend the needle on the dynamometer. He wanted a car that he could get in and drive 3,000 miles without thinking about, and yet when he needed to blow somebody's doors off, he just had to flex his ankle a little bit and job done. Mike, you were saying you've had a look. You've obviously taken the valve covers off. What can you see? Well, what I can see is money. What I can see is that you know a standard conventional 351 Cleveland is in a Mustang or in a Pantera. Use cast iron cylinder heads, um, a cast iron intake manifold. Uh, Jim took the time and the money to install a performance fast road camshaft. Uh, the set of Edelbrock aluminum cylinder heads. There are these aluminum rocker arms. Unquestionably, there's going to be high performance valves here, high performance push rods. There's pushrod guide pleats that have been installed to stabilize the valve train mechanism. So this thing is built to uh, withstand high RPM running for extended periods of time. And uh, I'm sure it's going to make you quite happy. I think when I bring it back home, we'll have to take it apart a bit and just check out, make sure that it's torqued properly, valve clearances, all that kind of stuff. But the engine is good. There is one unknown quantity though, and that is the gearbox. The ZF gearboxes for these cars are really expensive to buy if you can find one, and they are almost even more expensive to fix if they are broken. And the one that comes with this Pantera is a little bit grubby, so first impressions aren't good. We're gonna do a few little bits of checks on it and see if we can get a handle on the general condition. So that's, there it comes, okay. I would still position the bucket underneath just in case. Where are you? I got it. I got the bucket. I smell gear old lube. It's got the angle. Oh, there you go. It doesn't look bad. Yeah. I mean, it's but it looks like it's very sparse in amount. Yeah. Okay, so let's go in you want to... and have a look. Okay. That all looks pretty good from what we can see, yeah. right? Yeah. That's as far in as I think I can go. And you can also go in from underneath. Oh. Well, we haven't been able to carry out a full inspection, but with the boroscope, as far as we can see, the signs are pretty good because there's no visible rust inside. Everything looks quite clean. So again, we're gonna to have to go with it, but I think expectations are good that this gearbox will be okay. I might get it sort of checked out and perhaps serviced when we're back in the UK. But this means that the last thing that was holding me back from trying to get the car is now out of the way. So let's talk to Anita, Jim's wife, and see if we can get a deal. Right, so Anita. Yes, sir. We have had a look over the car, and as expected, Jim's done like amazing work, you know, the stuff that he managed to do. So I just wanted to ask you, what were Jim's plans originally with this car? What, what did he want to do? Was he just buying it to fix it up and pass it on, or what was he gonna do with it? Because he's had quite a few, and he had another one as well which I think has gone to Ben, your son. Right. So what was the plan for this one? This was to be our car, our final car. Oh, he's wow. he's had so many. So that's why he took extra care on everything. It was going to be our final car. Oh, so it's quite, it's quite a special project, it then, is. really. It is. Well, do you think I can take it on and finish it off, and you'll be able to follow it all on YouTube and see, see the car? I hope you love it like we do. Brilliant. So it's good to go? You're happy for good me to, to take go. it? Yes. Thank you so much, Anita. Thank you. So you may have noticed that this is wearing a Ford style wheel. I am going to be putting on some of the eight and 10 inch original campies, but Campagnolos, but and they're the wider than the standard ones. So I think the standard ones were Mike, what were they? Six and eight? 15 by eight in the rear, 15 by seven in the front. Okay, so seven and eight. And the ones that I've sourced are rare, desirable 8x10s. So that will be changed, but they're not going to get here in time for me to ship the car. So the car will be shipped 
with these to keep it rolling. Keep an eye out for the next video because in that, we're gonna find out what is missing that I still have to get for the Pantera, but also we're gonna mount as much hardware as possible to this car to get it ready for shipping. So that includes engine, gearbox, I'm gonna put the carb on there and then just pack it up, ready to go to the UK. Thank you so much for watching. A huge thanks to Mike and Chuck who have been absolute legends and of course to Anita and Ben. Thank you and look forward to seeing you for the next video.